One of the best things about being a casting director is the ability to affect an actor's life in a positive way. When an actor books a role, <laughs> there, there's no greater pleasure than to be part of that creative decision. You know, in a similar way, I love doing this podcast video or affectionately known as a patio because some tip or some suggestion or advice that I've offered has helped actors in ways that I never thought possible. Now, I received a really nice letter that affected an actor in a really positive way that I'm going to be sharing with you today. And I'm going to answer your latest questions about acting and the acting profession. Acting questions, direct answers, all happening in this installment of Casting Actors Cast, the patio for actors from a casting director. That's me. Jeffrey Dreisbach. Well, hello, and welcome to this episode of Casting Actors Cast. I'm Jeffrey Dreisbach. Welcome. Glad that you're here today. I'm a casting partner with the McCorkle Group in New York, hoping that you're having a good day, because I'm having a really good day, and I'm really looking forward to sharing with you today's podcast. I want to just kind of get some announcements out of the way first, if you will allow me to do that. First of all, my dear friends at Actors Connection, listen, if you haven't looked at Actors Connection, please do so. Go to ActorsConnection.com slash New York, where you're going to see all kinds of online classes, uh, webinars, uh, the uh, intensives, meeting casting directors, working with professionals in the business, all online. That's actorsconnection.com slash New York. I also wanted to do a quick shout out to my friend Philip Galinsky, who's really got an amazing new uh, website, and he's actually helping voice actors achieve their dreams by the work that he is doing. It's called yourvostudio.com yourvostudio.com. He's an amazingly talented guy who has his own studio and he is helping voice actors really take it to the next level. Yourvostudio.com. His name is Philip Galinsky. Let him know that I sent you, would you? And then finally, uh, my shout out to weaudition.com. It's really an amazing place where you can earn money for rehearsing with other actors as well as um, discovering this wonderful video chat community to audition. You can self-tape, you can rehearse. Also, you get industry advice on this really, really nice website. Do check them out. By the way, if you're interested in joining them and becoming a member of weaudition.com, all you need to do is use the promotional code CAC, that's for Casting Actors Cast, 25, and that will give you 25% off when you sign up. So it's a really great deal. You get a discount, plus it's a really cool way to work with other actors in the community, and also you get additional help for any time you want to do some self-tape work. So that's weaudition.com. Okay, that's it for the shameless promotional announcements, except for I'd like you to check out castingactorscast.com. That's my website. It has all kinds of really cool stuff in it. There's some previous podcasts that you can check out, some previous videos you can check out, but also there's a form that says dive into the talent pool. And if you do that, that's going to open up another whole window of all kinds of freebies just for jumping into the talent pool. And uh, one is a free book on doing voice work called Conversation Pieces Out of the Studio, the voiceover workshop for professional actors. In addition to that, there's some show notes that you can find for a previous episode called Jeff's Jots. There's also a free secret video called What Casting Does Not Want You to Know. But guess what? I'm going to tell you. And so that's a free downloadable video. That's a free book. All kinds of really cool stuff just by going and checking out the website, castingactorscast.com. And finally, I just want to continue the shout out. I've been receiving some really nice submissions for actors who want their self-submitted videos to be 
critiqued on the show. And I'm happy to do that. And I would invite you too, if you want to send a video to me, uh, 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 one audition piece, uh, you want to send me the link, send it to castingactorscast at gmail.com. And you never know, I might choose your video to evaluate live on the air. That's what makes that really, really exciting. So I'm looking forward to receiving some emails from you at that. And then finally, just thanks for tuning in. So I received this really, really nice letter in regards to that episode that I did a couple of episodes ago called Act Better. And I received this really nice letter from Mark that I just wanted to share because this is part of the communication and the dialogue, the the conversation rather, that, that we all seem to be having regarding certain episodes. And I've gotten some really fantastic uh, emails over the past 150 or so episodes of Casting Actors Cast. But this one really struck me and I just wanted to share it with you. It says, Jeffrey, just watch your Act Better podcast on YouTube and thought it was one of the best you have done. Not that I haven't enjoyed and found informative all of your other selections, but this one was, dare I say, more vulnerable, relatable. So many times in the past I've wondered, is there something else I need to do? Someone else I need to meet? Someone else I need to take class with? And on and on. Finally, I realized there isn't a rhyme or reason as to how things work out in the world of acting, and I just needed to focus on, as you said, why did I decide to become an actor? The answer is self-fulfillment. Here's the irony, however. I found what led me to being an actor, but now whether it is because of the pandemic, everything that's going on socially, environmentally, the technical aspects of auditioning, I no longer have the drive to pursue an acting career that I once did. I can act better because of all that I've learned from life, classes, etc. But at this point, I no longer work at acting. There was a point in your patio where you apologize for ha perhaps rambling, and I need to do the same with this letter. I just wanted to share with you, however, the thought that I got where you were coming from and appreciated the episode. Uh, that is signed, uh, Mark. So thank you so much for that, Mark. I really appreciate that. And you know, with all the teaching that I do, for example, I, uh, I always tell the actor that they're working too hard, that they don't need to think so much, which is really hard to sort of just turn down that thought process, especially in a class or in an audition environment. It's hard to do that. But just relaxing and being your truest self, sometimes, listen, that's all you need to do. That's all you should consider doing. But this happened, uh, this discussion I want to share with you now is this little acting scenario um, that I brought up in a class. And it was really interesting to get the responses that I did. And so I'm going to give you the same acting scenario. And I want you to think about what you would do in the same situation. So let's say that you've auditioned and now you've been given a callback. And now you're told that the callback is going to be a chemistry read. That's something casting decides they want to bring the two people in together, and that's called a chemistry read. But let's just say the other actor you're working with completely inserts their acting choices during the audition. That means they're just deciding to go full steam ahead with what they want to do with that audition and leaving you in the dust. What do you do if that happens? One. Do you ignore the selfish actor and just decide to do your own interpretation, no matter what you're getting from that other actor? Or two, do your best to meet the other actor's choices and forget your ideas to show them that you are a team player. So in a chemistry read, those are your two choices. What would you do? So it was amazing. I got all kinds of answers. But the predominant answer from most actors in the class was to just simply acquiesce to the other actor and just try to make it work with them.
In other words, whatever choices or work you've decided on, that you were just going to follow that other actor by being receptive and just trying to show that you can listen and participate in the scene, even though it's compromising some of the choices you've had. Now, there were a few actors that said, oh my God, to hell with it. If they're not, if they're not working with me, then I'm just going to do my own thing. And then I also thought about this response. Sometimes if the other actor is making really hard or strong choices that you undercut the other actor by kind of going the opposite, instead of trying to meet them halfway, you try to just, like I said, undercut what they're doing. Well, this is the answer that I gave them. It depends. <laughs> I know you hate that answer, right? But it does. It depends. For example, in every two-hander, two-hander meaning two people in a scene, there's a protagonist and there's an antagonist. The protagonist is the one that leads and decides the direction of the conversation. Now, that can switch during the course of a scene as well. But nevertheless, if you are the protagonist, then you need to have the courage of your convictions and stick to your choices. On the other hand, if you are in the scene and you are taking a subservient position, if you're taking a different kind of position, then perhaps it will show your ability to really work with the other actor if you just simply try to work with them. So in other words, there's no right answer here. But know that a chemistry read is very, very valuable and it is very, very important that you can work and play well with others, but that you're also making creative and interesting choices for yourself during an audition. So I just thought that it was a really fun scenario. What would you do? What would your choice be? Uh, I think that answer I gave you is going to be really particularly helpful. At least I hope it is. So I received a couple of questions in the mail, and then I want to just uh, respond to that. So we're going to open up the mailbag and answer your questions. Okay, let's check out this week's mail. Just go to castingactorscast.com and fill out the comment form. It's easy. All righty, so some really good questions this week, and I wanted to address those questions for our episode today. One um, person, particularly uh, interesting question, I thought, wrote this. Especially interested in tips for get getting going in your 40s. Long time voiceover talent with lots of theater and short films, but no network credits. So how do you find the best way to getting going? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the question, by the way. One thing that I do know for sure is that ageism does not exist when it comes to actors being cast in roles. In other words, you're not being disqualified if you are the right age for the role you're being asked to play. Now, sometimes people can play younger, sometimes people can play older, but that sort of, you know, I'm at this age, and so is that going to be hard for me? The answer is absolutely not. The challenge comes in making sure that you've got all of your ducks in a row first before you start taking it to the next level with, for example, representation with legitimate agents or agents for film and television. That means that you have a well-constructed resume. How's your headshot? That's a really other important tool. Just because you don't have a lot of film experience, you might have had a couple of student films, for example, or they may be too old. It's really, really okay. The whole goal is for you to simply establish yourself as a professional, that this is something you are transitioning, especially if you've had some previous work in voiceover work or whatever, just making that clear as part of the message you're committing to when you give us your resume is going to really help make that determination. But being right for a role is just simply that, being right for a role. And making yourself available and being willing and staying open to all of those opportunities is the best piece of advice I think I could give. Uh, finally, the other piece of advice I'd like to give is this is a great time to take a class with a casting director who can really guide and help you feel more confident about your work in front of the camera. 
specific training for film and television is out there. It is now virtual, so you can find a lot of places where they're doing that kind of work, and that's something I would jump at the chance to do, only because it's going to help you with your energy, your confidence, and your overall presentation. So I, I hope that's uh, helpful to you. Here's a question that I also got. I'm feeling a bit stuck because of COVID-19. Is there any way to get over my growing resentment and move forward? That came from a letter writer by the name of Shannon. Thank you, Shannon. I appreciate that very much. Well, you know, I, the answer is I know how hard it is. I mean, first of all, I empathize and I understand completely the challenges of that. It's kind of difficult. There are so many actors who were ready to um, open up their shows or they were ready to start rehearsals or they had actually started their final run through and then COVID hit and they had to shut down all of the theaters. Um, production companies that were shooting films had to just freeze and stop. So I understand uh, resentment is something that's really easy to fall into. But here's what I suggest. Wherever you are mentally, emotionally and physical, I know this, if you always do what you've always done, you will always get what you've always gotten. <laughs> so that means it's time to really take a look at how you can slowly, with loving hands, start changing the choices that you are making to move away from that resentment area, understand that everybody is in the same boat, and start developing habits that are going to be there for you to feel better, there for you to know that every little baby step that you're taking as far as your career is concerned is time well spent. So that means, are you maybe doing something physical for yourself every day? Are you putting yourself out there when it comes to classes and seminars? And there's all kinds of free things. There's all kinds of play readings and script readings. There's all kinds of ways that you can make connections with other people. And slowly, if you do that, you're going to find that those negative, resentful feelings are going to just kind of float away. It's not going to be overnight. And I really, really support you in your choice to wanting to make a change. So change just simply starts with the first step. I know that sounds so Pollyanna, but it's really true. I can tell you my own personal story about this is that when I um, was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, I didn't freak out at all. I really didn't. I said to the doctor, I deserve this because I just loved candy so much. I was just like such a chocoholic, you know. And you know what? I just decided to stop eating sugar. I stopped eating carbs. I started walking every day. I'm not trying to pat myself on the back here. I'm just saying that I decided to do something about it. So that was sort of my own bottom, if you will. And now today I've, I've absolutely cured myself of type two diabetes. I no longer have that as an issue in my life and I've never felt better. So I'm really grateful that I had the the wherewithal, I guess is the right way to say it, to take a look, to analyze my situation, and just to decide that I'm going to start doing some things to make it better. And uh, that seems to work. So I just wanted to pass that along as, as, as well. Finally, the last question is, when is it time to speak to a rep, an agent or manager? Do I apply? What is the process? <laughs> Wow, thank you very much for that question. I see, I don't know who wrote that. Um, oh, Maritza. Maritza wrote that question. So here's how it works generally. Most of the time, an actor who is acting, doing acting work, does their best to try and invite agents and managers to come and check out their work. Now, a lot of it's done online, I know, but reaching out to an agent or manager after you've done the right kind of homework. What does that homework mean? That means that you have decided on the kind of agency that's going to be best for you. You see, all agents don't cover all areas quite as well. They're not just kind of a universal agent out there. Some agents are boutique agencies. They're very small. There may be three or four people working in that agency. That might be a really good fit for you. 
Then there's those medium-sized agencies. Their job is to get appointments for actors. They're experts at it. And so that might be an agency that is well worth your while. Additionally, some agencies are kind of experts uh, a little bit. There are some agents that really love having uh, actors of a certain age or some agents who love uh, to um, represent dancers or singers or musical theater people. And then there are some agencies that just really focus in on film and television work for their clients. So you need to do a little bit of research. You don't literally apply. But what you do do is you extend yourself when you have a reason to make contact to an agent, you extend that as an option. You say, I'm taking this class with so and so, and I'm really learning a lot. And I was wondering if you are looking for or seeking um, my kind of talent. And that would you include your picture and your resume and a very brief kind of note or cover letter to them. But generally speaking, the way it happens is that you're in something and the agent or manager knows about that something you are in and they reach out and want to make an appointment to meet with you. It's very much a, a marriage and you have to date first. And so once you have an idea about what agencies might be good for you, then it's a matter of making a concerted professional effort to make occasional contact and pursue with your interest in seeking representation. Thank you, Maritza, for that. I hope that that was helpful to you. That's it for today's episode of Casting Actors Cast. I hope you got something out of it. It was my pleasure to present this podcast to you. I look forward to your correspondence, reaching out, and also please, if you're interested in kind of promoting the podcast, I would be so grateful. Please leave a review on iTunes or any podcast provider where you get the podcast. I'm Jeffrey Dreisbach. Thanks for watching. Casting Actors Cast is made possible with your support just by listening. Please like, share, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts.